Good morning, and this is Plus TV, Africa of the Press. Thank you for joining us, and we're going to the headlines this morning from the National Dailies. We're touching issues bordering across all the dailies this morning on Of the Press. Joining me for analysis and a breakdown of most of the headlines in the National Dailies this morning is policy analyst Ifi Oji. Good morning to you, Ifi. Good morning, Benny. All right. It was a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. And also, I have social commentator Anihuvi Ayeni. Good morning, Anihuvi. Good morning, Benny. How are you doing this morning? Good. All right. Let's get into it this morning and we'll start off straight with the Punch newspaper. Mm -hmm. The first headline in the Punch this morning market dives below 15 trillion naira as investors lose 267 billion naira. And that's your final page 27 of the Punch newspaper. Nigeria to repatriate fresh 321 million dollar abacha loot and there seems to be no end to the loot of the abaches. Mm -hmm. I told my son to sack his secretary to avert adultery, says Adeboye. Interesting piece right there. Nigeria owes World Bank 9.81 billion dollars, says DMO. Insecurity, senators hit Buhari hard, perform or resign, sack service chief, lawmakers tell the president. And still also in, in the Punch newspaper, Balogun Market Inferno consumes seven buildings to collapse. It's quite unfortunate. Uzo Dimma promises to divert security vote to salary payment. Tackle subsidies, privatized power transmission, NESG tells the federal government. And Lagos investors perfect 100 billion narrow bond for infrastructure and orders. Policemen raid Lagos hotels, arrest workers and customers. And lastly in the Punch, IG Southwest governors to meet Reps Plan Amate Kun Law. Let's start off with the fire, the inferno that happened at the Balogu market. It, it seems to be like a real common issue. This is not the first time um, there's an inferno at the Balogu market, and the Amatan seems not to give way as it is right now. What, what is very pertinent at this point in time? Ahinovi, let me start with you. Uh, first of all, the Amatan is a dry season. Yes. And this inferno was actually caused by someone was trying to refuel their generator was, yeah. and that kind of sparked it and the congestion you have at balogu what i would say in this uh, in this regard i must commend the service chiefs the the respondents yes. that's the fire service they real they did quite a remarkable good job i know that a lot of a lot of uh, our infrastructure gets a, a bad rap yeah. on what they have not done right where well, some this time, consuming this inferno yes right? And um, you know there, there, there was a real, there was a lot of upset because I actually have the story of someone I know whose shop was gutted by this fire and they could not retrieve anything back from it. But I must applaud what the service, how they responded to it, and how they were able to put the fire out. Uh, unfortunate, um, it's quite unfortunate, but it's also it talks more about the congestion, the reason why. We cannot always, because of business, allow congestion. Yes. It's really, but I, I really commend what the service chiefs. I agree with what you're saying yeah. too heartedly. I mean, on one hand, the reason that uh, Balogun is such a, a source of uh, a boost to the boost. national economy is because it's 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 just a volume of trade yes. that that goes on there. But at the same time as well, that is almost like a double-edged sword. They haven't found a way to tackle the uh, share volume to make sure that that, that sort of is, is sort of put at a lower risk in terms of trying to make sure that there's the the markets are properly planned yeah. with the proper uh, city planning and uh, put those kind of things right. I know they've tried in places like Onicha and Antejo Show that never they just never seem to quite get it right. And it always makes you wonder that in the next couple of years, what's going to happen okay. if we're not able to tackle this? Yes. Yeah, because it's 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 a recurring incident. I mean, fire outbreak, and I'm just bothered to know how um, the the rapid squad, the emergency squad, how they, they get to the scene. How easy? Because Balongo seems pretty congested, mm -hmm. and so if if at the end of the day the whole market could be raised by fire, um, I think that there's need for a restructuring of 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 the Balongo market as it is right now. Yes. This is not the first time there's a fire raised in the Balongo market. Yes, and th that is going to be a very difficult one yeah. because everybody wants to put their business out. So everybody wants in Balogu, um, market. In Balogu market where everybody else comes and they can see because they are going into business to make money. So the end, the goal for them is how do I make money? They shop upon shop upon business upon business and everything, but then they ha just have to put a stop to it and create other avenues that people can actually get their goods to market without causing so much mayhem. I mean, things like this should speak to people, but unfortunately, men soon forget. I agree, otherwise, Lagos will continue having to put out these fires, <laughs> fires literally speaking, and figuratively. Oh, there's a call by 
um, a member of the House asking President Mahmoud Bari to resign. Let's let's put on that a little That's bit. That's right. A uh, very good, a very good yeah. friend, uh, yes. Senator Barry B. I yeah, think Barry he used, B, yes. used to also be a uh, chair of the uh, Committee on Power as well. Well, I mean, it's no it's no uh, it's no surprise that whenever there's a bipartisan issue that he will have something to say. Well, it's, it's a bipartisan issue. Yes. There's obviously a partisan uh, position. So on the, on the floor of the National Assembly, I think it was yesterday, he yesterday. made his he made his in plenary he made his he made his um, uh, views very very clear. Yes. He just sort of I guess reflected the dissatisfaction of certain members of society, especially the voters in Nigeria, and wanted to be actually. He I think he said if if I remember correctly, let us go to the source. So we can, we did not elect certain people. He named uh, all the people that are in charge mm -hmm. of the security in Nigeria, and then said to the we did not elect these people, but we elected the current uh, party. I guess that's just a way of continuing to making sure that the mm. checks and balances in the country continues to sort of move, uh, move along in progress. Yeah, Sheo, um, Sheo Garba in response called him an, um, an armchair um, critic known for um, making straight comments and like he had a lot of things to say that that's the, as well. the, issue, the issue of security it, it's, <laughs> he had a lot of, it's, lot of things to say it's can't be partisan it's a national concern yes you know it, it goes beyond being a, a PDP member or an APC member it does it does it's yes. bipartisan I agree with you yes. but then you also well, I mean one of the things he also said as well was that uh, he, he was basically looking at um, uh, he was easily looking at it and said, we need to find uh, con constructive solutions. We need to make sure that these solutions that you're about to mention, be he almost in a, in a way preempted what Abayi had to say. And Abayi didn't take it uh, uh, quietly at all. He didn't take it lying down. He was actually, his comment was actually a response to being preempted almost to give a solution. And in his head, the only solution he could give was to at least tackle it from the head down, head up and then trickle down. Any, any, any thoughts on that? The, the most important thing for Nigerians is I want to go out. I want to travel from one point of Nigeria to the other without the fear that the person will be killed. Mm. Yesterday I heard the story of a young man who was going to work and he was, um, and these kidnappers tried to kill him. Now they broke his legs wow. and they broke his hands and they, they um, put rub in his eyes. Oh, wow. Unfortunately, they were not able to kill him He's now in the hospital. This was a gentleman who, um, who woke up in the morning ready to go to work, on his way to work. Now, this is part of the insecurity that Nigerians are talking about, not to talk of those who are seeing their relatives die. So this is not, like you said, it's not a political PDP or APC yes. issue. I think what um, Abaribe has said should actually bring it light to the government that this is real thing happening to real people. Yes. Let's have safety, let's have security. I live in the north. It saddens me that we cannot travel from Abuja to Kaduna without ferry on the train I, I and by just, car. I was just going to come to that because my brother stays in Abuja and whenever oh. he has to go to Kaduna or back to Abuja, they go by train okay. and the roads are no longer safe. And it tells you how a quagmire our security situation has become. And I think there was another comment um, attributed to Gerba Shew when he said Abari Bay um, should, be, should be the one to resign because he was responsible for Nambi Kanu. And, and he couldn't, he couldn't deliver. Can I, yeah. I just felt that was. I that think that was just. Really, that's that's really a partisan. Yes, that's yes. very personal. Yeah. But I mean, at the end of the day, that's politics. Because that's dirty. besides the point. There's yes. a security challenge. Yes. And yes. The, the earlier we address it, the better it is for everybody. All right, we'll move on from the punch this morning. Let's take a look at the headlines. In the Vanguard newspaper, fire destroys seven shopping plazas at Balogun Market. Edo 2020, Obaseki declares war, threatens to expose Oshomale. Is overbearing, says Iriase. Insecurity, fire service chiefs now. Senators, reps tell Buari, reps pass resolution asking service chief to resign or get fired. Declare national security emergency, Senate tells Buhari. Uproar in Senate as Abaribe asks Buhari APC to resign. Abaribe ought to be in correctional center, says the presidency. Still in the Vanguard newspaper, call members to receive 33,000 as allowance. Omar Gege not convicted in U.S. says to court. And that's it. Lastly, in the point in the Vanguard newspaper this morning, still the issue of security, quite huge, quite big. And I'm just concerned what um, the Bari administration has to say about this. 2023 is, seems far away, but still close by. Um, reprisal attacks and kidnaps have been taking place, Plateau, Kaduna. And I'm just wondering, they came on the mantra of, they were going to address security challenge um, in Nigeria. And if at the end of the day they're not giving us that, is this call out of place? Especially with a, with a seven, 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 seven chief as it stands right now. 
Um, I think one of the things that triggered what Abaribi said mm -hmm. was what the president said as to the shock of the president of the news that was coming to him about yeah. the insecurity. Mm -hmm. And he said, if this is coming to you as, as news, then what are these, what are your service chiefs doing that he cannot give you this information and you will come out with a solution and a resolution as to how to tackle it. Yes. And the funny things about also what we read in the press and what we see outside is that government is doing something and it depends on who you are talking to. Mm. Because when you look at it, I once met with a policeman who told me, he said, Madam, there is no part of Nigeria where something is happening that you don't have the police. You don't have the army. Yes. However, what exactly, how exactly can we see them? Um, Abuja, Kaduna, um, Abuja Kaduna, that we even go by train, people coming out of the train station are being kidnapped on their way home. From the train station? From the train station. So travel by train is safe. Then traveling from the train station to your home is, 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 uh, is dangerous. So it's like we said before, government needs to let us see physically. If we see armor tanks on the way home, we know that there's something happening. Which, I mean, which obviously is a good segue to uh, the bonds that 100, 100 billion uh, Naira bond that Somolu has actually raised. raised. Okay, I was going to yeah, come so to that. I mean, you're about there are many already. ways in terms of tackling this issue. Yeah. Even if we can't look to the uh, leaders right now, in terms of even looking at specific things that can be done, mm. we can improve our roads, can improve our transportation, we can improve our infrastructure. I know that in the next uh, 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 six months, we, ha we have a commitment that we have made to the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. I know that our, our needs, in terms of infrastructural needs, for to, to see that project through is something to the tune of, in, in, from an African perspective, something to the yeah. tune of a hundred uh, trillion. Mm -hmm. Yes, a hundred trillion. Yeah. So at the end of the day, right, with Alda, I mean, what they have been able to do is no small thing. I know. I guess he doesn't want to be called uh, His Excellency, but it is an excellent thing he has done. What the Mr. Mr. Governor has done. Yeah. So I mean, looking at it, we, we just need to encourage that kind of uh, those kind of investments and make sure that well, obviously that that debt profile is low and we continue to re make those repayments. Oh, interesting. You did make mention about <laughs> transport and improvement. You want to say something? No, that. Okay. Okay. Also, that what Lagos State has done goes to other states as well. Let's yeah. see what the other states, states are, are also doing, doing. Yeah. to bring the same type you, you of. You didn't mention tra the transport system when you were speaking about um, what um, His Excellency did by raising a hundred billion uh, naira infrastructure bond, development bond. Right. Uh, I just want to take your perspective. There's a ban. There's a ban on Keke and Okada that yes. will take effect from yes. one February. Yes. Now, many people will argue the fact that there were a lot of angles were not considered when yes. this ban, um, when they talked about banning Okada from first yes. enforcing a ban that's always been there. Um, people are going to be, people are going to thrown back into unemployment and there are yes. many people who this their means of livelihood, right. you know what I mean? I, I, I totally agree with what yes. you're saying, Benny. Benny, at the end of the day, right, they, they are a lot of, uh, uh, in fact, from an OP, max.ng perspective, yeah. these Go are, Golkada, yeah. they have at least $200 million investment in these mm -hmm. different ventures. And right now, just by that one st statement, yes. that money has more or less sort of dissipated. So we have to sort of make sure that if, if you're making this, you have to also take into consideration investors into your states. Because the investor, investors money, I mean, yes. credit, credits, loans were taken for, for most of these businesses. Yes. And so did you think the Lagos State government should be seen on this decision? I don't, I don't know. So I mean, at the end of the day, right, what the Lagos State did, I, think, I know especially during, uh, I think it was um, fashionless, they had regular stakeholder meetings yes. with the different sectors of the markets. They really should pick and up it's these amazing. things. Yeah. Uh, we spoke with the, um, the Lagos State Commissioner for Information and Strategy yesterday on Motor Show, and um, then there was another um, another um, biker that came into the building, like yes. one of the OP yes. um, go kata person, and he said Cindy. they were they never had any consultation or deliberation with the Lagos State government, mm. that there was no such deliberation or consultation with, with them. Now, I want to go back to the issue of um, Garba Shewu. Now, he did say, <laughs> <laughs> he did say It was very lively. Yes, it was. I mean, <laughs> he did mention that um, the people of Nigeria elected the APC into government in 2015, but that the service chiefs were not elected. <laughs> they were appointed. Now, what is stopping the administration of President Mahmoud Buhari right now from reshuffling it's service chiefs. The security issue is so grappling. It's so palpable. I mean, people can wake up and feel free and safe going out daily without the fear of something might just happen. Ultimately, I think it's about accountability. You know what I mean? 
if you're able to do the reshuffling and you, you, it gives you a, a new level of... Uh, but do you agree there's need for a reshuffling? Of course, yeah, of there course is there, is. there is. There is a need for a reshuffling without a doubt. But at the end of the day, I guess if once you do the reshuffle, all eyes are going to be watching. And when all eyes are watching, there's a level of accountability that is going to be there that necessarily may put you at a uh, pressure that you didn't uh, bargain for, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and apart from the uh, restructuring, is also the need for institutional restructuring. That is the mindset of the of the of the police, the army, the everybody. Do yes. they have the discipline of gun handle? Do they have the discipline of their profession? Is this still part of their core values, or is this something that they have put aside because of the economic situation of Nigeria, or because everybody feels that the police is bad, so they have to act in the way that everybody expects them to? Mm. to act. Now, if you can have that kind of mindset of a change, if you get a security, if you go to any one of the security companies now, the employees, every single day, they are talked to. They Every single day, they have these trainings, and so they know how to conduct themselves when they come out. Mm. The police and the army and all these people, do they still have that discipline in them? Do they have, still have that core discipline? Mm. So apart from changing the people from the head, it's also it's a whole institutional restructuring, restructuring. that needs to be yeah. done for us to really feel confident in our police and in our army the way we should. If we did, we would not feel so afraid. I agree. And lastly, we take a look at the nation newspaper. Coronavirus, government bans China travels, returnees to self-isolate. Hmm. Millions lost as fire raises 10 plazas in Balogun market. Makide meets IG on a Motekun council crisis. And Omar Gege never convicted in the U.S. The news has it. Why I'm probing Oshomale about Basaki. Consumers to pay 7.5% 7 7 VAT on meters. And that's on page 11 of the nation newspaper. Government to recover $321 million loot. 74-year-old gets Bellamore Bellamo Oil Duplex orders and presidency attacks senators for asking Buhari to quit. Insecurity, senators rep push for service chief start and jealous wife said self ablaze and Southeast governors okay join security and that still goes down to the issue of Amotek Kun security. It's a major security, security, security in Nigeria right now. Yes. yes. So, I mean, you need security in every aspect or every facet of our life. But I also wanted to just segue into 7.5%. Uh, yeah, VAT. And the final, yeah, yeah, VAT, and, uh, which forms part of the huge compendium of, of the, the financial, uh, the finance bill, sorry, yes, which has obviously been enacted right now. And I mean, in that bid to demystify the, um, the provisions of the Act, I think every day there's a new revelation in terms of what the meters, uh, um, what, what's, what falls under the charge. But I, I would just um, urge us to also, remind, as a reminder, that yes, we have issues with the past sector at the moment. Mm -hmm. We all know what those issues mm -hmm. are. They are, you know, the, the, the gas supplies has been, is, uh, is, is uh, really high. I mean, the prices of gas is really high for the um, producers. And at, the, and at the end of the day, the mito, are the, um, the tariffs for the, um, the discos and all, and yeah. down the value chain, yes. they are still obviously uh, suffering uh, main issues, um, they're still suffering in terms of not being able to um, to put in the, the tariffs that would yield them some kind of um, profit. Okay. So at the end of the day, this 7.5% is not a surprise to us because I guess at the end of the day, it affects everybody. Oh, well, some some are saying yeah. yes, some are still saying no, that the 75 will take effect. AEDC, that's in Abuja, they've mm. already given us a timetable of when it's going to start. Yes. <laughs> oh, and I also thank you very much, Annie Huvi Ayani, social commentator and Ifi Oji, policy analyst, for being part of Of the Press this morning. Mm -hmm. And there's much we can take this morning. Join us same time tomorrow for Of the Press. This is Plus TV Africa, and I am Benny Ark. Good morning. <laughs>